On today's episode, we're going to talk all about base. If you haven't been living under a rock, you would have uh, seen the explosive growth on the base layer two ecosystem in the past month. And especially if you take part in crypto Twitter, this is all that everyone is talking about. Every single coin, every single meme is trying to integrate on base. Well, now that the wave is starting to uh, quiet down a little bit with the first explosive growth, and now that the market is seeing a short-term correction, I think it's a good time to be looking at the ecosystem again and figuring out, is this going to be a longer term trend for the rest of this year uh, to watch? Is Coinbase actually doing something meaningful to, uh, to take advantage of the base ecosystem and push the coins on their ecosystem through onboarding through Coinbase Wallet and the Coinbase app? And are there actually real products being built on base that are worthy to invest in? And lastly, will base even have a coin itself? Maybe that's the play here. So we'll get into all of that in today's video and we'll get into the whole spectrum of uh, ways you can gain exposure, starting from the very top, which is coins that are very established and represent the base ecosystem. And then we'll go down the list for typical altcoins that you look at for DeFi ecosystem uh, ecosystem builders for DEXs, launchpads, etc. And then we'll get into the meme coins on base, the established ones, as well as some of the newer ones that I think are legitimate enough, as well as the bigger trend around layer threes and Farcaster. What is really all that about? Uh, a lot of people still are confused about this and how they relate to base. So we'll get into that as well. Okay. Uh, welcome everyone. If you're new here to the channel, my name is Dennis. I'm a crypto angel investor for the past five years, and I have invested in over hundred crypto companies on this channel. I share views on market trends and investing strategy to build wealth in crypto. Okay. Let's get into it really quick. Just want to talk about the stats currently on base. So no matter which, uh, charting platform or stats platform you follow, the Growth on base is all very clear. We can see this very easily with two metrics, uh, total value locked and user growth. So total value locked uh, as reported by DeFi Llama has been growing uh, since summer of last year, it was around three to 400 million TVL. And you see since February, basically the last month uh, from March 1st until now, it's been going up from 400 million F, uh, total value lock to 1.1 billion. This is quite significant uh, and it makes base the number, uh, what is the chain ranking now? It is the number eight chain in terms of total value locked. So it's just behind blast and it's catching up to avalanche really quick. So uh, this growth, you can also see on certain other platforms. For example, L2Beat, this will show you $3.2 billion of TVL. Uh, a lot of this would um, account for bridge in volume, such as uh, stable coins and Ethereum bridged in. Uh, so it will count a little bit more than DeFi Llama does. And even on here as well, in this methodology, it's also at uh, it's even higher. It's actually at number three already. And this is for all layer two projects. So this puts base a little bit ahead of Blast. And this does agree with DeFi Llama. So basically, base is reaching the point where it's kind of as big as Optimism and Arbitrum and uh, almost surpassing Blast now. And when we look at the uh, adoption metrics, you see that value bridged going up as well as um, we've seen on total value locked directly matching. And we have total users as well from the last month, uh, seeing a sharp drop, especially when base really started to gain the kind of mimetic exposure. So March 15th, we saw in one day over 800,000 new users onboarded. And since March 15th, for the past two weeks, we have had uh, now just over 2 million new users on the chain, daily active users. And okay, this isn't daily active, this is daily new users. So let's say like daily new wallets being created. It doesn't have to directly translate to one-to-one -one users. It's just people creating wallets for the sake of getting the coins, getting the airdrops, etc. But 
nonetheless, really good metric. And you can see down here, weekly transactions growing. This is basically people speculating on all kinds of coins. Uh, it matches daily transaction. It matches volume as well. And yeah, and you see, of course, network revenue is growing with this same uh, transaction metric because the more transactions you have, the more revenue going back to the chain itself. Okay, so these are the stats for base. Now, why is this happening? What's really behind this push? We have to dig a bit deeper into the overall plan of Coinbase for the base layer two. So if you didn't know, base is built by Coinbase Exchange, and they say that this is a open source technology good sort of ecosystem, and they built it in a partnership with Optimism, All right? So when you scroll down here, Coinbase, is the main partner here. Optimism is the other, other partner. And Coinbase came in to build this base layer two as essentially the first um, use, uh, the first client of the Optimism super chain. So the Optimism super chain is this technology provider that sits on top of Optimism and uses the uh, OP stack code base to create their own layer twos. And all these layer twos come together technically to contribute to the Optimism network and the OP token. Now, there are some debates out there as to which super chains actually does this in terms of revenue. And the whole um, the whole definition is kind of mixed together. But Coinbase was the first adopter of this technology. And Coinbase also came out as the first partner developer firm uh, alongside Optimism to build this super chain. So I think it's very safe to say that Coinbase has a very significant um, interest to make optimism successful and to contribute to the super chain and make that successful, uh, probably through, you know, OP token deals and grants and, and joint partnerships and only equity in whoever's behind optimism, etc. So with that being said, that's why the f uh, first way that you can get very easy exposure on the growth of base is with optimism, right? So as long as we see, uh, base continuing to do well, the price of OP should continue to do well. So you can try to play a little bit of catch up game there and say, okay, if base can continue, continue to grow and that's just one client on the OP super chain, OP should have a lot more value, value to accrue to the token. And you see OP is still relatively quiet in the past three months. I think this is a pretty decent bet if you're bullish on base long term and you just want exposure. Now, on the other hand, you can also bet on Coinbase stock, right? Just by using coin itself. Uh, in my opinion, like if you're just looking for, oh, hey, like base is exploding, I think this is gonna be a huge chain growing by another 10X in the next year. How do I get exposure? Split your exposure half in OP token and half in Coinbase stock, and then you're good. You don't need anything else. Now, if you wanna get deeper, into the background of uh, why this is being pushed. Then we dig a little bit deeper into the uh, base networks 2024 strategy and mission. So on their roadmap, they they say they're going to create this um, application economy, and these are the high level focuses. So they really want to have this decentralization as a goal, and usually when products and especially when layer two chains say that they want to decentralize most of the time that means eventually they will have a native token a governance token that can uh, serve as the staking token for the sequencer this is the true uh, the core part of a layer two that uh, matters for the consensus and this is what the op token does what the arbitrum token does and if they really want to fully, fully decentralize, they have to have a token in order to decentralize that sequencer. Now, they haven't said this yet, although they have said that, you know, they really want to uh, achieve total decentralization. And does this mean they eventually will have a token? I think it's very hard to say because all the docs you read on, uh, on base right now. So when you look at uh, base, uh, where you can, yeah, developers for base, right? All of the ecosystem docs for base, it will say that they are not issuing a token. And at least it will say that they are currently no plans of issuing a token as the warning banner on top. And the CEO of Coinbase, Brian Armstrong, also came out late last year to say that 
the company uh, he didn't say won't launch the, his exact words are we're not planning to make any token for base and i think a to uh, spokesperson confirmed that there are no plans but it didn't say technically you can read into that and say yes or no uh, there is the other side of the chief legal officer paul of coinbase who came out and said that uh, I think a token could be viable at some point in the future, but they uh, haven't ruled it out entirely. So it's kind of mixed signals. I think, you know, they're really having to protect themselves. It's way easier to say no first and then later on say, okay, we changed our mind and we're going to do it. Versus like if you say, oh, yes, now and then later on you say no. Um, because this matters so much because Coinbase is a publicly traded company uh, in the US, of course. So that's one side. And then why are they pushing this so heavily and are they actually pushing this are they just putting this technology out there as kind of open source or will they have deeper integration with coinbase wallet and their application and their exchange so this is something i found very interesting that was just published last month so base the chain itself is making smart wallets the default choice so what are smart wallets smart wallets are the um next wave of uh, potential trend coming for Ethereum and Ethereum users. So think of it like uh, you can use a wallet without needing to use a seed phrase or worry about gas fees. Uh, you can directly onboard to um, a layer two or even layer three and buy some meme coin directly from a traditional rail, like a bank account. So uh, in the Ethereum world, this upgrade is called account abstraction or smart wallets. Uh, essentially, these are technology wallets that give you a uh, handle your seed phrases for you and you don't have to take advantage, uh, use your own seed phrase. And uh, it does like, you know, gas optimization for you and you don't have to spend Ethereum in order to uh, transact on chain. For example, if someone sends some meme coin, you can directly sell that meme coin for any other coin without having to have Ethereum as gas. So what that smart wallet will do is it routes your tokens first. Uh, some of it goes to Ethereum in order to cover the gas fee, and then the rest goes to the actual transaction. So things like that uh, go into the uh, bucket of smart wallets. Now, Base is making smart wallets the default, and this is being done in partnership with Coinbase. So read here. Base is collaborating with teams across the ecosystem, including Coinbase, to ensure base readiness for new wallet experiences that simplify user onboarding. So Coinbase actually has a new smart wallet that just launched on Base Testnet and available for developers. And this will go to mainnet sometime this year. So what this will do is that it will let users create a wallet instantly for any on-chain app using just a passkey. No app downloads, no extensions, no C phrases required. From there, users will be able to easily spend their Coinbase balance, pay gas in their token of choice, and more. This is actually huge, right? Think about the implications of this. And you can find this on uh, the smart wallet page for Coinbase. So this is on Coinbase's website and they're developing this as well. So read this again. What this will do once it's on mainnet is that if I'm a user, right, I use a pass key. So what a pass key is, it's a, uh, if you use an iPhone, your scanning of your face acts as a pass key, right? Uh, if you know that iPhone has these uh, keychains. On Google, I believe there's also, um, uh, on Android phones, there's uh, fingerprints, there is um, facial scan, and on Windows Hello, and on uh, your MacBook as well, anything that recognizes a biometric, there will be a passkey, right? So what these passkey do is that it's it has a secured enclave on the device, and you can store whatever's in there, right? You can store your password, you can store your credit card info, you can even store a private key or a crypto wallet and store the private key to that crypto wallet. And I have used something like this before where um, I can lock into exchanges using passkey without using my um, you know, 2FA or password. And the passkey is actually more secure because it's biometric that cannot be faked and because it's 100% encrypted. So once this integrates with the passkey solution, what happens is you go on a website 
you go on a app, a decentralized exchange, and it integrates this Coinbase smart wallet. So what that will do is that you have your phone and you scan your face and directly it recognizes that you are you and thus you should be granted access to your seed phrase and that related wallet. And all of that is in the background. And then you don't have to download any apps. So you don't even need to have Coinbase wallet and no extensions like MetaMask, no seed phrases. Instead, that passkey on your phone or your biometric login on your computer, it recognizes it and then it plugs into your Coinbase account, right? So whatever amount that you have in your Coinbase account, like the exchange itself, you have some Ethereum there, you scan your face, and then you can go from your Coinbase balance Ethereum directly into a meme coin on the base layer two. That's actually huge. That is a no enormous integration that can enable basically retail everyday users all across the US um, that integrate Coinbase, that have a Coinbase account already and across the world that uh, whoever wants to you know, onboard onto chains, well, they can do it very easily through this Coinbase smart wallet. And I'm sure they support Ethereum mainnet, but the first chain that they will support outside of Ethereum is gonna be base. And probably, you know, for the longest time, the only one, because this is their own product. So this is actually huge. Uh, even though they don't directly, you know, list any meme coins on the base, uh, on the Coinbase app itself, this integration is solves a lot of that, right? Because it's a it's an open technology integration instead of a exchange listing integration like on Binance Smart Chain and Binance Exchange. So what's going to happen here is that throughout this year, once you know this base uh, to Coinbase smart wallet integration goes live, all of the tokens, all of the chains and all of the applications on base network no longer needs to use MetaMask. They don't need to even need to use like Trust Wallet or you know whatever wallet you have. You don't even need an app. You don't need a Coinbase wallet app. You just need Coinbase exchange itself, a Coinbase account, and then you can use anything on base. That will be big. And I really like the way that they're putting this. I think this is going to be the one of the smoothest integrations we will ever see in crypto uh, so far. And I think this is what's under the hood that is giving people a lot of hope that um, is starting to build on base today. Uh, because Coinbase is really in a unique position to offer this. I don't see many other players that can offer this. Maybe, you know, Binance can do it and they can integrate it through Trust Wallet, uh, where, you know, you can go directly from Binance through a passkey and then directly into BSC. They could do that. Uh, but, you know, they have already kind of played their card with BSC. So this is cool. And this is the main thing that I found to be super exciting that people are not recognizing. And this is what gives base, the ecosystem, long-term potential that separates it from everyone else. Okay. Uh, so that's that. And I know, you know, you know, it's a lot of shilling, but really there's, there's not much you can buy here yet. You, you cannot even, you cannot buy anything too, too crazy to bet on this direct integration. If you're bullish on this long-term integration and you want to stay exposed, just get some Coinbase stock and get some optimism and then you're good. Okay, so that's the uh, base chain's relationship and integration with Coinbase. Now, let's get into the actual uh, altcoin picks that I have on today's list. So as usual, we're going to go, we're going to go from top to bottom with the uh, typical ones that you see uh, on DeFi Llama. So you guys know how I like to treat these ecosystem stuff. Usually you go from top down and look at the total value locked on a chain and look at the uh, top DeFi protocols on the chain. So we have the top decentralized exchange, lending protocol, you know, uh, launchpad, etc. So let's look at that. In terms of decentralized exchange, there is basically only one player that's worth having, and that's Aerodrome. Aerodrome is the decentralized exchange that only supports base and has actual volume. So when you trade on a base chain today, you're either trading directly on Uniswap, which integrates base, but is not a base exclusive thing, or you trade on Aerodrome. So that's why this is um, for DeFi stuff. 
This is basically the only one, which makes it very simple. And this is why its valuation is also very, very high already. $1.1 billion FTV. Uh, you got to remember, this has gone basically 10x since uh, one and a half months ago. So treat this how you will. If you want some more base exposure, you can get into this. I'm sure this will continue to do relatively okay as long as base continues to grow. Uh, but there's not much to say here. This is very very established project already this is a very legit project also uh, it comes from the velodrome decentralized exchange which uh, was the premier decentralized exchange on optimism and it's a you know i believe this point two year long project uh, so this is very safe uh, not much more to say about it now in terms of uh, DeFi gems i am actually looking at something very unique uh, and that's the synthetics ecosystem. So if you guys didn't know, synthetics, since their major run-up in the last cycle, they haven't had much noise, but this is because they really, really anchored themselves into the optimism ecosystem. So after integrating with Ethereum mainnet, the only main network that synthetics is live on today is optimism. And they are actually the first, one of the first to integrate the super chain as well. And when base came live, they were one of the first to integrate base. So under the hood, uh, you can check the uh, website and Twitter of Synthetics, and you'll see uh, the optimism integration here. Uh, not, yeah, on here. And then on their Twitter, you see that they have been heavily, heavily plugging their growth on base. So everywhere you see, it's like their integration with base, et cetera, et cetera. And especially for their main uh, perpetual exchange that, that sits on top of uh, synthetics as the liquidity layer. So this is called Quenta. Quenta is built by synthetics, but it's a front end exchange that uses synthetics for liquidity. And this, I believe it's one of the only competitors to our aerodrome right now on base. So when you look at uh, Quenta, so Quenta's volume is actually doing really well. So they're doing 30 to $40 million of daily volume on base, which is actually very high when you compare uh, this to even larger exchanges such as uh, DYDX, um, AVO, uh, Apex, et cetera. Those guys typically do, uh, like the top five, usually do 100 million plus daily volume. Uh, the mid-tier guys, like the top 10 or so, usually does like 50 million or so daily volume. And these guys are, are already doing 30 to 40 daily volume. And this is exclusively on the base chain. So this, I truly believe, is a quite a hidden gem that people are not seeing yet. And you can see this on the price chart as well. This really hasn't been doing much for the past, how long is this? Uh, 20, 10 months. So bottomed out around 70 cents, currently around hundred bucks. And it hasn't even overtaken its last uh, November rally at 200 bucks, right? It's currently still at hundred bucks and very established team as well because behind Quinta is Synthetics itself. So this is one that I, I'm closely watching. If base continues to grow, I think people will start to discover perpetual exchanges and Quenta is one of the main players there. Uh, if you're interested in this stuff, there is also another one called um, Polynomial that haven't launched a coin. This is an, yet another front end that sits on top of synthetics using it as liquidity. And you can trade on this as well. And this is another player that heavily integrates base. Their token hasn't launched yet. It probably will have an airdrop if you want to trade somewhere that has airdrop instead. Okay, uh, so that's all the DeFi stuff. I really don't think there's much more DeFi stuff happening on base yet, uh, at least the established ones. Okay, now in terms of other narratives, right? AI and gaming narrative. These are always hot and on base, it's actually quite a blue ocean right now. There's not much happening. So there's one quite established project that I found called Virtual Protocol. 
definitely not referring to virtual bacon name, but this protocol is, first of all, exclusively built on base. It's a AI protocol on base that creates co-owned human curated plug and play gaming AIs. So think of like in-game AI characters, AI agents, AI NPCs, uh, AI uh, you know, storylines that you can do dialogues with. This is at the core what they do. And this protocol is not new. So the reason why I like this one is because it's actually a rebrand from a previous gaming project that's quite established called PathDAO. So PathDAO is a uh, gaming guild project that launched in late, uh, I think early 2022. Uh, similar time as Mirror Circle and Guildfy, very established projects, and they had a huge treasury, but they couldn't make the gaming guild angle work. So they pivoted instead to still, you know, ha pay heavy homage to gaming, but now they are a uh, AI agents protocol for gaming. And now with base picking up, they are, I believe, truly one of the first to fully, fully go deep into base. Uh, so I picked up a small bag of this virtuals protocol. I think this honestly kind of under the radar right now, people don't really understand what's behind the hood here. It's gaming, it's AI, it's established team from past out and it's base. So checks all the right boxes for me. Uh, and then uh, in terms of uh, other established projects that are kind of worth having, although uh, a bit smaller in market cap, I am looking at this launchpad project called Starter Labs. Uh, this is again, another example of a previously established team with good track record that is now relaunching on base. So Starter Labs has a launch pad that has been running for over three years called Starter.xyz, and they have raised over $45 million on chain. This is your typical like ideal platform, similar to, you know, Dowmaker, Pokestarter, Paid, whatever you have, Ape Terminal, etc. And then uh, these guys are now relaunching their platform on base. And you see here, their token has just gone live on base three days ago. And I really like this one because it's, again, relatively under the radar. And I posted about this on, on our Discord and on Twitter as well. So you should definitely follow me there if you want the quick alpha on these. For what it is, right, a three-year-long uh, established team that have built a launch pad, the product is all there. They've raised millions of dollars before. And now their experience team is launching on base. Guess how much the coin is worth today? This coin, fully diluted valuation. Uh, it's not on here. Let me give you the fully diluted valuation, 18 million, right? Look at this. It's quite cheap, to be honest. Like I, I really like these kind of coins. When you do the fundamental research of who's behind it, What's the history of uh, of their track record, etc.? Like when you discover these coins at 18 million valuation, that's cheaper than some of the coins that are racing in private rounds on base right now. So this is why you know I, I like this project. I picked up some directly just from the market, and yeah, uh, like I said, like there really isn't that many coins currently building real products on base. It's all memes, which we will talk about. But these are the two coins that I found that are quite interesting, virtual protocol and base uh, and uh, starter labs. Okay, speaking of memes, let's get into the memes. So if you really, really want to bet on memes, I just, I would recommend uh, to at least bet on the established memes. So, so far the two established memes that I see the founders of, they are actively engaging in the community. Uh, the first one is Toshi. This is the OG meme coin on base. And you see it launched uh, way back when base first went live in August, right? August of last year. And now it's coming back. And this is one that I can get behind because uh, the founder of Toshi, he is a very, very established person actually in the space. Uh, he remains pseudo anonymous, but a lot of people know him. <coughs> And he has built other projects before. And the fact that they were first to launch on base and continue to build, definitely something we can get behind. So Toshi is one, if you just want meme exposure, I think this is still relatively okay. 
180 million dollar valuation compared to some of the other ones we'll mention so another newcomer that is uh everyone's getting into is brett 670 million dollar valuation honestly a little bit expensive at this point like if you compare this to toshi i think toshi has a bit more um what do you call it provenance on the chain and uh a bit wider holder base on the chain as well but nonetheless brett i know is legit so if you want meme exposure you can get into this one as well and then uh, of course we're going to talk about degen uh but one other meme coin that i picked up uh, that just launched yesterday is called anime <laughs> a very interesting name here and i tweeted about this as well uh you guys should just directly check my tweet to see the whole analysis there but basically uh azuki the nft collection plan to launch this new coin for their whole ecosystem called anime and they're making this like layer three chain called anime chain now a lot of people don't like azukis so the all of the other nft collections that have you know built up their brand around the anime theme before such as uh, like y fusion zero and one um what else do you have like uh seer light uh capsule house a lot of these guys i believe like 10 plus communities they came together and they did a large airdrop to front run azuki and launch this anime coin now this coin is seeing the typical post airdrop dump i think this is very typical and the dump should sustain for a while because this is one of the biggest holder base airdrops i've seen in fact i, I believe this is the biggest airdrop on base so far when you look at the actual holder base of this coin remember this launched yesterday guess how much holders they have Fifty-four thousand. so this is directly all from airdrops and this will continue to rise because uh, they touched upon like 10 plus uh collections to airdrop two and that accounts for a total of over 100,000 holder bases and this already puts them with a larger holder base than Toshi and larger holder base than Aerodrome on base. So this kind of wide holder base count is what I really like about this. And this is why like, even though this is low market cap, 5 million, I was already scaling in yesterday at 10 million and I'll probably pick off some more of this today. You know, high risk bet, mind you, it's micro cap 5 million, but high holder base count and 10 of the largest nft uh communities coming to get together to do an airdrop i think this has legs so uh another meme that i think you know has some merit behind it in some way it's not just like a pure dog coin okay now let's get into the meme that everyone has been talking about and that's dgen <laughs> so this has been the most explosive meme coin and coin in general happening on base and reaching $2 billion now uh, since this week. What's really happening here? Uh, this is very interesting because it's not only the meme coin narrative with the DGEN ticker, but the DGEN coin actually has two other narratives going for it. So DGEN, uh, I don't know if they actually covered, yeah, they covered this here. So the they launched something called the DGEN Layer 3 chain. This is a real chain. You can add it to your MetaMask, your wallet, and start building stuff and trade coins on there. It is live, right? You can go on to Bridge on there. You can check the Explorer for it. There are real transactions on here. So what they did here is that they launched this meme coin first, and they, did, they took the meme coin that's live on base, and then they used the uh, opt arbitrum stack and launched a layer three chain plugging in the dgen coin as the gas coin i know it sounds kind of crazy like layer three what the hell we're, we're not even like um, fully understanding layer twos yet it's just it is what it is it's the narrative that they got behind and a lot of people seem to like it uh i'm personally not too bullish on the so-called like layer three narrative for long term because i really think it's just app chains if you want to build something and you have your own chain you can call it an app chain you can call it a roll up you can call it layer three whatever it's all the same thing uh technically it's just another app chain 
So this is the one narrative that they really latched onto. The other, and potentially even greater, is the Farcaster narrative. So what just bear with me here. So Farcaster is this social fi platform that is gaining a lot of traction. Essentially, it's a Twitter clone almost, and it's decentralized and built essentially from the ground up, uh, mobile native. You can access it on iOS and, and Google Play Store today. And Farcaster really is filled with crypto people. Think of it as like the early adopters on CT. Well, these guys are all on Farcaster. Now, for the longest time, the Farcaster founders, they don't want to launch a coin. However, uh, there, there are these communities that started to build up on Farcaster. So I believe Dijen, yeah. So the one of the first communities that built up on Farcaster uh, is called Dijen. And this is kind of like a subreddit, sub tweet, whatever you have, you know, whatever you want. And there are 55,000 followers on here. These are basically members that are communicating with each other. And this is exactly where the DJ and coin came out from. So all the followers and users on Farcaster, they came together and said, okay, we're gonna do a coin. Since Farcaster, the platform itself doesn't wanna do a coin, we're gonna do a meme coin under our name, under our community name called DJ on Farcaster. And because Farcaster is decentralized and it has like wallet integrations, so all the early people that were active on this like sub cast, whatever you have, they got early airdrop to DGEN. And this is the history of where this DGEN coin came from. So now that people recognize this and recognize that this DGEN coin came to $2 billion FDV, now everyone is trying to get into other uh, established Farcaster communities. And they are all launching coins. So the best place to discover these is on the Farcaster Index uh, website. So if I can find that here. Yeah, so the website you want is farcaster.in. And here you can see exactly this information. You have all of these sub channels on Farcaster. So of course the number one is DGen channel with 55,000 members. And then you have these ones, TN100X, you have higher, enjoy, whatever. And here they are ranked by number of members under that community channel. And you see, these are the coins that I have launched, right? So TN100X, FDV here, higher, whatever, right? These are the coins. And if you want to get into the real narrative that is DGEN, it is not just a meme coin on base. That is where it trades, but truly the narrative that it has is that layer three and Farcaster. So that's why I am actually looking at all of the Farcaster community uh, coins uh, with this list here and figuring out, okay, which of these are actually very active and which of them is likely to launch some sort of layer three. If there are any players like that, I think it's a easy, easy bet for me because that will be very similar playbook to DGen. Now, so far, I see two that's pretty interesting. Uh, so first one is called Hire. This is basically the second largest community on uh, Farcaster. And it also came way earlier than all these other copycats. Uh, so this coin, if you want to bet on a very similar meme coin to DGen, this is very similar. Uh, another one that is coming up uh, is not a new coin, but is really, really going deep in this exact same narrative as DGen is called dog. <laughs> so this is very funny, but uh, this dog coin I have actually covered way back uh, about two and a half years ago when this coin first launched. So this coin you can already find on CoinMarketCap, CoinGecko. It's called the Doge NFT. And the history of this coin is that uh, there's this group led by uh, some of the bigger and uh, bigger whales in the industry and they bought up essentially the original picture of the doge 
of um, uh, Kabosu uh, is the name of the doge, the real doge behind that face. And uh, they had a deal with the owner and they won the auction and they fractionalized that NFT into this dog coin. And it, they, of course, the name is called the Doge NFT and the ticker name is literally just dog. And I covered this way back in 2021 because uh, this was honestly like I was pretty optimistic about this to catch on to the Doge meme. And because the team behind it is very rich, they they come from something called Pleaser DAO, if you're if you guys are familiar with them uh, from last cycle. And people like Andrew Kang, Mechanism Capital, a lot of these guys are, are early investors in that. And so this is the history, and that's why you see this coin has basically three years long history at this point. 270 million market cap, not too extreme yet. And now, not only did they launch their coin on base, but they also launched it under Farcaster as a sub-channel, as you can see here. And they continue to have this uh, meme site going for them, which is the original Doge meme, the original NFT with this original picture that is owned by them. So at some point, this is going to catch on. Uh, that's kind of my belief. And, you know, there is this... Um, I don't know how you would feel about this, but there's this uh, narrative going on as well because the actually the Doge itself, uh, herself, Kabosu, she is 18 years old. And for any dog that is very, very old, uh, it's like translates to human years, that's over 100 years old. And basically, she's on her last legs. She, she has some diseases um, and... She's probably going to pass away like within one year, let's say, like conservative speaking. And when that happens, this kind of meme could blow up again. So this is another narrative going for it. And that's why um, if you are like, OK, going back to all the way up to the layers again, if you are bullish on memes on base and you are you have seen what happened with this uh, DGEN coin on base, you really have to dig deep and figuring out what's happening. What are the narratives that is pushing this DGEN coin and which teams are able to carry the same things similar to DGEN and understand what they need to do. And this is why I'm looking at these two coins that probably will copy everything they do. Uh, Hire and uh, Dog. And that's it. So these are the two like so-called meme coins that are catching the exact same trends. Okay, uh, and that's it. That's overall for Farcaster. Uh, if you guys are interested, definitely download the Farcaster app. There's a lot of alpha you can find on here. Uh, maybe they can even have their own airdrop later on. Maybe Social Fight comes back and you know Farcaster gets a lot more users. We don't know what's going to happen, but this is definitely somewhere you want to be if you want the early, early alpha uh, that's even earlier than crypto Twitter. Good stream. I really liked doing research for this one as well. I think uh, really shows that base is uh, organic traction is there and looking at how deep the integration is from Coinbase, from their wallet, from their smart wallet. There's a lot to come for this year for the base chain. So uh, I wouldn't write this off just yet. Just don't go overextend on the base uh, memes and look into fundamental stuff now. And I think this is a good bet for the rest of this year. Uh, okay, that's it. Before I go, make sure to check two things out. Number one, follow me on Twitter or X at virtualbacon0x. This is where I drop quick alpha before I make them into these in-depth videos. And all of the meme coins and quick coins, virtual, you know, anime, um, whatever starter labs, build out that I have covered, I have all covered these on Twitter X first before I make them in videos. And if you want deep alpha, uh, including my personal alpha as well as trade alerts, trade setups, and a community to uh, participate all together with, make sure to join our Discord with the link in my bio or go to discord.gg slash virtual bacon. Uh, this is 35,000 member strong community now and we have community analysts as well trading floor nft chat shitcoin chat if you're into that kind of stuff 
you can definitely find something that interests you here. Okay, that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for joining, and I will see you on the next video and next live stream. Bye-bye.